I'm pleased to have Victoria and Alex here at this table for the first time. Welcome. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having us. Now tell me about the first time you two met. I mean, did you, did you know that you were, I think one of you used the phrase, musical soulmates? We didn't know, but when we first met on the porch of your family home in Baltimore, um, I handed him a CD of music, and music was already just in play between us. And yeah. so the second time we, we got together, we were already we were playing in the basement of my house, and it just continued from there. So music was this, I don't know how to call it, but fate yeah. or whatever. It was at the heart of the genesis of our friendship, so it's yeah. always been there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but was it, did you have the same instincts, the same sense of what music could be? I think it, it, it's always been uh, just very, very natural. There's never been uh, even a misstep in it. It's been so natural. Like instant, the music was the best friend. Yeah. And how did Baltimore influence you? I think more than anything, Baltimore has been, for me personally, and it's different because Alex was born and raised. Right. I'm someone that moved there in 2004, and it's just become a home. It's just been a haven. It's been a place where we've made wonderful friendships with people and seen a scene change you know over the last 12 years the music scene has changed many many ways and will always change because it's very unique um but it's just been that it's been a community that has Is it a given music town, so much Alex? i think it's a music town and uh but in a certain sense like obviously it's not like bustling like new york or yeah. la or some other cities might be but it sometimes can be good yeah, exactly. As a yeah. haven. Yeah. It's refreshing. It's, yeah. that's, that's the perfect word is haven. Like it's Baltimore, for, for me, feels like, uh, not unlike other cities like New York where there's all these pressures being put on you all the time, it's a place that really lets you be. Hmm. But have you <laughs> sought fame like so many musicians seek fame? I think it's a dangerous path to travel seeking fame. I think that we've gotten lucky. Um, we've also worked very hard, and I think that if you love something, that's what's going to take you someplace. I think yeah. seeking financial For its own gains reward. and, and we've, that we've, it's, yeah. I've just, I've read too many stories and heard too many, you know. We sought to have our music heard. So as much as that brings fame, but I think the other things like social media and just having ourselves be known for anything besides mm. music, we've tried to yeah. not have that. You prefer smaller venues? Yeah, yeah, we do. We. Uh, we just like to be able to feel everybody in the room and not have like the experience stop halfway through and then there just be this blob in the back that's just there that you can't I think that arenas, to. arenas were never part of Beach House Destiny. Yeah. 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 Our music doesn't really play in a big room. But there is some balance between your own artistic integrity and commercial success. Absolutely. And you think you have a sense that you have found that together. I believe that we have, we've through instinct, intuition, yeah. and, and, and doing things from a natural place, mm. we've tried our best. When was this released? Or late last year. There were two released in 2015. Yeah. Two so this was the second album yeah. released yeah. last year. The first one was Depression Cherry. Yeah, but I mean, that's a rather remarkable uh, sense of productivity. It's a lot of it's a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> the Beatles did it all the time, right? They they were putting out like a record every five months yeah. or something for a bunch of years. So. It's good enough for the Beatles. Yeah. It's good enough for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but who writes? We both we write. We both write. Yeah. yeah. And, but how do you write together, or do you just write separate songs? I would say we do, the you know most of the writing together. Um, yeah. And I think you know we're two different people, so our brains you know we're not always together. So if someone thinks of something. We're doing that separately, but the, the writing, the, the true evolution of, of Beach House and the songs is something that we've always collaborated together. And the name came from? The name came from, like I was like to believe, it came from the air, but um, yeah, we were just exploring the feeling of that first, when we were working on the first record, um, we were in this particular world. And you're in a different universe every time you make a record, but we were just wondering where where our band existed and Beach House is something that we got lucky. What comes first? The, together you create lyrics? I mean, you create the, the music and then, I think then that you attach lyrics to it? I get inspired by words just right. in general, like throughout the, the days, phrases come into my brain. But when things really flow out, it's music is what's inspiring the, the stories and the, and the narratives mm -hmm. and all that. Someone said about you, you're always looking to find out what the song wants. What does that mean? 
respecting the uh, I think the beast. I think yeah, we're respecting the beast. Of, <laughs> whatever it's going to be, small the or big. The beast is the 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 song, like the the material, whatever, the the yeah, the vibrations. What what the, the words of music in the end end up being? Yeah, like there's an emotional color that starts to come out of something, or yeah. or you know, and and you don't know what that is right away, but you get this feeling, and the feeling can be blank, but it's 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 a real thing, mm -hmm. and some pieces of music don't have it, and other pieces do. And so if, the, if there's something really real there, we'll just keep playing it, repeating it, pulling it, and then eventually, if we're really lucky, the words just start coming out. And the words and the sound, they form, they can yeah. form instantly. And the goal is to never lose the feeling that made you get excited about the idea in the first place. So that's what we mean about li yeah. listening to the song. So anything you do as you write, any layer you put on or bridge that you add or anything, t change of a drum beat or something, anytime it leaves that feeling, then you've gone the wrong way. Yeah. Make sure you feel the thing you felt when you put the words on. Exactly. And when yeah. you put it together. Try to keep yeah. some flame. Is there a role model for what you two well, want to a achieve? Lot. En endless role models, Who are I guess. They? Well, you know, like someone I've always loved uh, is Bob Dylan, just because yeah. of his uncompromising nature. And, uh, and the poetry. And his po poetry. Yeah, I mean, just so many reasons, but just the way he is. And, uh, and Neil Young is someone who we always looked yeah. up to because he never did a commercial once, right. you know, and like had so much integrity. Um, mm. I think there's a lot of. I've also loved Janis Joplin. I mean, yeah. there's, there's there's so many people. Jim Morrison. There. But they so, seem as much for their, in sense, listening only to their own drummer as much as they do to anything else. They're beacons, like you said, of uncompromising light in a certain way. And we yeah. can't all be as radical and, and change history as, let's say, Bob Dylan or Neil Young or anyone yeah. else. But you can at least, you know, try to forge your own, your yeah. own so way. So what of can you do? I don't know if we have that much control over, like I, even though I grew up with a musical background, and so sort of, I don't think I could guarantee that I would do what I'm doing now. Like I think it's just been about certain tenacity, a love, obsession. Uh, um, the obsession too. The obsession of 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 making things. Mm -hmm. I think making things. Um, is, is, is a lot about it. It's, it's a certain creative force, and I think some people have it more than other people. It's just, mm -hmm. it's a so, playfulness to maybe mm -hmm. a childishness to you, like you right. keep your inner child. Desire to actualize a, mm -hmm. a, dream. a dream that you've yeah. had. Yeah. Are you happiest uh, creating the music um, in terms of writing and, and the lyrics and the music and, and the arranging, or are you happiest when you're performing? There are different sides of the... Same, of the coin. same experience. Yeah, 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 it's like they're both wonderful in different ways. Thank you for coming here. Thank you so it's much. It's great to have you. Back in a moment. Stay with us.